You may come across this problem. You develop some great code solving a problem for you, but you don't really want to expose your data to the cloud and don't want to keep your laptop always on. I have my own daily batch jobs, web servers or APIs, and I don't want this to leave the house. On the other side, I have my network storage. It's always on and it comes with underutilized CPU most of the time. In the next five minutes, I briefly explain how I solve this problem for me in a pragmatic way. I am starting with a simple Python web server that needs to be always on. In this case here, I pick Flask. The server just picks some public data from financial data from Yahoo and maps it. The code is in a Python environment and we need a requirement file from it. We also create a dummy shell start script for now. The start script may contain a simple command like Python 3. On the Synology, we need to install the container manager, formerly called Docker manager. In a manager, we are downloading the latest Python standard image. That's all. Once the image is there, we can launch it straight away with several parameters in the container manager. Most important, we need to map a volume on the Synology where all the program files are. We need to copy our files into this folder. Then we need to map the network ports, container port being the port that we want to get exposed from our server and local port being the port on the Synology. Further, we need to define the location of the start script. This can't be easily changed afterwards anymore. Finally, we launch the container. In the container view, select the container. The container must be up and running. Then open a terminal session bash. In the session, execute the pip install command to get all required packages installed. As a next step, update the shell script, adding the necessary commands to start the server. Make sure the selected ports and IPs are matching. Then upload the shell script to the NAS, replacing the old script. Restart the container. When you check the logs, you should see it being up and running. Finally, update your NAS firewall rules, allowing traffic over the use port. You can then use the browser to verify your solution is working. Obviously, there are many more things to be considered, like authentication, certificates, server settings, backups, etc. This short video just give a starting point and is not the end of the journey. Although the technology is out there for many years, I couldn't find easy answers to my questions. So really hope it saves you some time. See you next time, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.